What I'd like to move to now is a little bit on the analysis of, of the transmitter itself for PCI Express 3.0. Now, if you have a sense of testing or have experience in testing PCI Express 1.0 or 2.0 devices, I've got good news for you. PCI Express 3.0, for the most part, is going to be tested in a similar way as far as testing in the, under the card electromechanical form factor, which is really what I want to limit our discussion to here today. And with that, you have adding cards and motherboard devices uh, as being the most common types of devices that we test under the chem form factor. And the PCI SIG provides for uh, fixtures to be able to test those devices. Now, the, the SIG has provided test fixtures for testing CHEM devices from the days of PCI Express 1.0 until now. Uh, you can go to the PCI SIG website and they have an order form there where you can order these fixtures. And we had a set of fixtures that we developed for Gen 1. We had, the PCI SIG had another set of fixtures for PCI Express Gen 2. And this, this comprehends um, what we refer to as the car, uh, Compliance Baseboard, or CBB, which is used to test adding cards, and a CLB, or Compliance Load Board, that we use to test motherboards or root complex devices. For PCI Express 3.0, guess what? We're going to have a new set of fixtures. So these fixtures are currently uh, going through some of the final stages of validation. Uh, so check with the, at the PCI Express website or send a, an email to the PCI SIG and ask them about the availability of these, these fixtures if you're interested in them. But uh, these fixtures should be available towards the latter part of 2011. And, uh, and you can get the fixtures from the PCI SIG directly. Um, they're, they're slightly different from what we had with PCI Express 2.0, but are very, very similar. And if you look at the overall test process, and test procedure that will be in place for PCI Express 3.0 will be very substantially the same. What this means is that if, when we're testing an add-in card, the, the, from a high level, what the process will involve will be placing a PCI Express Gen 3 device into the compliance baseboard. Then we'll be using a real-time oscilloscope to capture a waveform from that device. And then we will be using PCI SIG software run on the oscilloscope, this software is referred to as SIGTEST, to do an analysis of that captured waveform. So it's very similar. To, we did the, essentially the same, same process with Gen 1 and Gen 2, so very similar. Now there are some differences in terms of the analysis that takes place, and I'll get to that in a minute. For, for, for testing a root complex device, again, very similar. Uh, we have a new compliance load board that fits into the slot that's on your motherboard or root complex device. Now, the procedure that we use will be similar to what we had for Gen 2. The Gen 2 testing, if you remember, was a two-port style of testing. And when I refer to the term two-port in this context, what that means is you're going to be extracting a clock as well as the high-speed data signal. And those two signals are then fed into the oscilloscope and we capture the clock, we capture the data waveform that corresponds to that clock, and then those two waveforms are then presented to the PCI SIG software SIG test for further analysis. Now the differences that exist in terms of how that analysis performed is performed for Gen 3 versus say Gen 2 is this. We operate the device at um, 8 gigatransfers per second. So for Gen 2, for example, we would use a toggle function to toggle the, the device from its initial state at 2.5 gigatransfers per second to 5 gigatransfers per second. That's how we tested Gen 2. We'll use that same process to now step it into 8 gigatransfers per second operation. So when you turn on the device, it'll start at 2.5 gig Gen 1. We uh, hit the toggle function on the compliance board and it will move it to Gen 2 speed, and then it will also then toggle it to the Gen 3 speed. Now under Gen 3, we will, be, we will have to um, be concerned with the different presets that are established for the Gen 3 spec, and there's 11 different presets that we'll have to follow. Um, uh, under the Gen 2 spec, your device had to pass um, under a, one of the um, preset levels if it was a, a Gen 2 motherboard and two preset levels if it was an adding card. For Gen 3, it only needs to pass um, using one of the preset, one of the 11 preset levels that have been established. 
and uh, generally what we find is P7 or P8 tends to provide the best performance. So we usually start there when we do testing. Um, but you're free to ask or request of the PCI SIG tester when you bring your device to a workshop which preset level you want to test. Now once we capture the waveform, there's a couple of different things that we have to do. Um, if it's an add-in card, for example, for Gen 3, one of the things that we'll do is we will add additional losses to the signal that is measured and extracted from the compliance baseboard. Um, this additional channel loss is reflective of that, that, um, that long channel that we established for PCI Express 3.0. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the server channel form factor includes 20 inches of channel length and two connectors. At Nyquist, we want to see about 20 dB of loss in that channel. The compliance baseboard itself doesn't have that much loss. So if we're testing your add-in card, we want to add additional losses to the signal so that we can see how that card is expected to operate in a worst case condition. Um, in addition, the receiver package it, itself, on the chip itself, has additional losses. And those can amount between 2 and 3 dB, maybe. So we convolve with the channel losses those additional losses of the package. And there's two ways to do this right now. In, um, uh, one way is to use the software that's provided by your test equipment vendor to essentially convolve those channel loss models with the signal that's measured. Uh, eventually what we expect to have is software that's provided by the PCI SIG, and essentially this amounts to, amounts to a uh, improvement or enhancement to the SIG test software, which will, in addition to doing the analysis of the captured waveform, will also convolve these standard losses to the signals that are measured. Um, so that's really the main difference. Another thing we may see with PCI Express 3.0 testing is the removal of cable loss effects. So to test these devices, we have um, one meter of cable length. Now we tend to use extremely high quality cables when we're doing our testing. Um, even so, that additional one to two dB of loss is additional loss that helps, that can act to reduce the eye height that we measure. So what we want to do, of course, is to provide as much relief um, to the measurements that we make and remove as much of the loss of the test equipment setup as we can to maximize the um, uh, the margins that your signal is tested against. So with that, that gives you kind of an idea of what we're doing for transmit testing and, and that, that comprehends both transmit testing for uh, adding card devices as well as for motherboards.